What's up, Falcons Nation? It's your boy, Jew, coming at you with another Atlanta Falcons video. As always, Falcons Nation, rise up. In today's video, I would like to talk about Coach Arthur Smith and what we should expect out of Coach Arthur Smith's offense in year two. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I've done Atlanta Falcons content. Hit that like button for your boy. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys continuing to tune into the channel. Uh, continuing to share out my content on all the social media platforms. If you would like to follow your boy on Twitter, you can follow me at Jew Talk Sports. Uh, if you would like to donate to my channel, you can donate to my cash app, uh, which is the dollar sign Jew Talk Sports. And if you would like to be a part of my Jew Talk Sports membership, uh, you can hit the join tab here on the channel. But I do appreciate your continued support. Uh, I appreciate all of the new subscribers. Uh, for recently hitting that subscribe boy, uh, hitting that subscribe button, excuse me, and joining the channel. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So, like I mentioned in today's video, I would like to talk about Coach Arthur Smith and what my expectations are uh, for year two. Uh, as we know, Coach Arthur Smith is the head coach for our Atlanta Falcons and also the offensive coordinator. And I'm really intrigued to see. Um, what this offense will look like in year two uh, with Coach Arthur Smith calling plays uh, for our Atlanta Falcons again this year. Uh, personally, last year, Coach Arthur Smith's scheme uh, as far as passing the ball was a lot of horizontal routes, wasn't a lot of deep shots down the field. It wasn't a vertical offense. It was a short to intermediate pass game. Now, I'm not too sure if that was just because our offensive line struggled to pass protect or whether it was because we didn't really have the weapons as far as the wide receiver positions, uh, our wide receiver position, we couldn't beat uh, press man coverage. Um, our smaller receivers uh, couldn't win one-on-one -on -one matchups and things of that nature. So I believe that that had a factor or could have played a role in what we've seen last year out of our Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we didn't have many explosive plays down the field other than uh, Kyle Pitts. He was the main weapon we used to throw the ball you know, down the field. Uh, him and Cordell Patterson was the focal point uh, of the offense. But this year and year two, I really expect um, Arthur Smith to open up the offense. Um, I do think uh, in this draft in a couple weeks, I believe it's about two weeks away to NFL draft. I do believe the Falcons are going to go out and bring in another playmaker at the wide receiver position. Personally, uh, my number one wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons is Drake London. I think that he would fit perfectly in Arthur Smith's scheme. He's built similar to an A.J. Brown who Coach Smith had in Tennessee. He's a guy that can uh, go deep. He's a guy that's big and physical at the point of attack. Uh, very good at catching contested um, footballs. Very good at going across the middle and being physical. And very good at blocking down the field for in the running game. So I really think um, if you bring in a Drake London type wide receiver, a big physical wide receiver, that it will bode well for our Falcons. And I'm really interested and intrigued to see if Arthur Smith is going to open up the playbook similar to what we've seen uh, with Kyle Shanahan in 2016. If you guys remember when Kyle Shanahan was here, uh, his first year in 2015, um, everything was pr pretty much predicated off of Julio Jones um, in that first year. Uh, he neglected guys like Roddy White to get them involved in the offense. Uh, we had Leonard Hakerson. Um, was another wide receiver we had at that time. Um, we still had Devontae Freeman in 2015, but uh, Kyle Shanahan in that 2015 season, in his first year, he really didn't open up the offense. It was a very vanilla offense, and he basically targeted Julio Jones a whole lot, similar to what we had to do last year with targeting a player like Kyle Pitts, where everything was uh, based around him, and he was similar to Julio Jones last uh, season, for us, he was the focal point of the offense because we didn't have many weapons. Um, but I do think in this year's, uh, in Arthur Smith's second year at calling plays, I'm interested to see if he's going to open it up. Kind of what we've seen with Kyle Shanahan in 2016 when Matt Ryan had basically had a year to develop under that scheme and learn a Kyle Shanahan scheme. And he came back in 2016 and had an MVP type season. Um, you know, it had an MVP season. So I definitely think that Marcus Mariota being brought here because he knows Arthur Smith's offense already and them bringing in guys that are familiar with uh, Arthur Smith's scheme. I really think that that's going to bode well for our Falcons. 
Um, I do think that this year we're going to see a lot more explosive plays last year because we didn't have a Calvin Ridley on the team. Um, you know, it really hurt our Atlanta Falcons because we didn't really have the weapons. We didn't have money to pay guys. And we had to, you know, bring in guys like Tarjay Sharp on one year deals. Um, you know, we had Hayden Hurst on the roster, Alameda Zacchaeus. Um, but I really expect that uh, expect our offense to be a lot better this season. I do believe that Arthur Smith will be similar to a Kyle Shanahan in basically uh, having a better season now that the players understand uh, his expectations and because he's going to have more to work with this year uh, with them going in the draft and bringing in another wide receiver. I really think that the Falcons are going to have a big season uh, on the offensive side of the ball, um, the offensive line as well. I think the offensive line play is going to improve whether you keep Jalen Mayfield uh, at that guard position and keep the, you know, the starting five from last season or you implement and add some pieces to the offensive line. I do think that they have a better grasp of the offense and I do think that it takes time for an offensive line to develop and gel together. And I think with those guys, those five guys that played last year, if they come back this year, they're going to be better. Jalen Mayfield is going to be better because he's had the development. He had 17 uh, games last year that he started in and played in uh, to get used to the speed of the NFL. And now these guys know what the coach expects out of them uh, in this offensive scheme. They had all summer and uh, all offseason season. Uh, to watch tape on things that they did wrong and to work on their technique and things of that nature. But I really think that that's going to bode well uh, for a lot of these young guys. Our offensive line is really young. We have a lot of uh, young players in general on this team. But I do think that this uh, offense is going to be, like I said, more explosive. Um, I do believe that this is going to be um, a positionless type of offense. And that's something that Arthur Smith talked about last season. Uh, he, he said he's a huge NBA fan and he talked about the Golden State Warriors and teams of that nature that play that open style and they play um, like the game has evolved in the NBA where it's positionless basketball. I think it'll be the same exact thing uh, with our Atlanta Falcons. We have a lot of players on this Atlanta Falcons team and on the roster that they've brung in and that we have from last season that are like Swiss Army Knife type players where you won't know what type of formation we're in because we have guys that can play multiple positions. You have Cordell Patterson, who lines up in the backfield, who lines up in a wide receiver, can line up in the slot. You have guys like Kyle Pitts, who's technically a tight end, but you can split him out wide, which we've seen a lot last season because we didn't have that number one wide receiver. He basically played that number one, number one wide receiver role. But you brought in guys like Demir Bird, who's another guy you can put in the slot. He's a guy who can play in the backfield, a guy who can do the jet sweeps and things of that nature. You have a speedster in the Lama de Sakias, who's another guy um, that can take the top off the defense. Um, you brought in guys like Alden Tate, who's another guy, um, 6'5", uh, 200 pounds, a guy who can you know go up and make acrobatic catches and things of that nature. And then you may bring in a Drake London, who I think will fit perfectly with this Falcons team because he's a positionless type wide receiver. Uh, if you go look at Drake London's tape, uh, he's a guy – who can uh, not only go deep, but he's a guy that they lined up all over the field when he was at USC. He was a guy that played in a slot a lot because of his size. They used him similar to a um, to a tight end, a big tight end or a big um, a big pass catcher, and they used him similar to what we used Kyle Pitts as last season in Arthur Smith's scheme. So if you're able to bring in um, a Drake London um, on this offense, it could be really really scary for a lot of defenses, but. I'm really intrigued to see what this line of Falcons uh, offense is going to look like. I do believe another thing that we have to focus on uh, with this Atlanta Falcons scheme is the running game. That's going to be a huge uh, thing for this Atlanta Falcons team. I do believe that the Falcons will go out and draft a running back uh, to come in and be compete for that number one running back role because Mike Davis uh, was underwhelming last year. He didn't perform well. And we know that Arthur Smith's scheme is based off of the run. Everything is predicated off the run. When he was in Tennessee, he had Derrick Henry in that great uh, running game and a good offensive line. But I expect this offensive line to be much more physical and improve this season. And I also expect them to bring in more running back talent. We did go out and bring in uh, Damian Williams uh, from the Chicago Bears. We still do have Cordero Patterson. We still have... Um, Mike Davis, and then we brought back Quadri Olison. 
But I expect them to go out and bring in uh, maybe a James Cook out of Georgia or bring in a Brees Hall or Isaiah Spiller. One of those guys that is uh, really good at not only running, but also catching the ball out of the backfield. And that's why I say that I really believe this offense is going to be a positionless type offense. And we know in today's NFL is basically everything is predicated off of matchups in the passing game, even in the running game. You, you play the matchups. And I think that this Atlanta Falcons team, the way that Arthur Smith and uh, Terry Fontenot was building this team, they're building it where it's a position, a positionless, excuse me, uh, offense. So you guys let me know what you think of the video. Um, let me know if you if you like where this Falcons team is headed and let me know what you think the plans are going to be for this Atlanta Falcons team. Personally, I expect this to be a positionless offense. I expect us to catch a lot of people by surprise, especially with the Marcus Mariota being added as QB1. Um, another thing I didn't talk about and I'll just talk about briefly is also being able to have the quarterback carry the football. And that's something that also adds to the running game because in RPO situations, quarterback keepers is something that we were able, um, he will be able to implement into this offense that we weren't able to implement with a guy like Matt Ryan, who's a pocket passer. Now that you have a Marcus Mariota, that's just one more wrinkle that he can add into his offense, similar to, he, uh, similar to what he did in Tennessee with both Marcus Mariota and with Ryan Tannehill, which pers- uh, puts a lot of stress on defensive lines and front sevens. When you have a mobile quarterback, it puts a lot of stress on, you know, the defensive ends and the outside linebackers. And it puts a lot of pressure on defensive players to know what their responsibilities are when a quarterback is doing those quarterback keepers and things of that nature and running option type run plays and things of that nature. I really expect this offense to open up a lot. And I think that this Falcons team is going to catch a lot of people um, off guard and by surprise because there's not a ton of tape uh, out there on what we possibly could do. Um, And but with that being said, you guys let me know what you think of the video. I have a lot more content coming for you guys. As always, Falcons Nation, rise up. Peace.